The next case that we're going to cover is Cohen v. California, which took place in 1971. Um, the factual background of this case is perhaps one of my favorites. Um, so in, in 1968, um, right dead on in the, in the highest portion of, of the Vietnam War, um, uh, the defendant in the case um, goes into the L.A. courthouse to make an appearance um, and he is wearing a jacket and on the back of the jacket um, is sewn in the words, fuck the draft. Um, now, given the nature, uh, there were women and children present, uh, but the behavior of Cohen in this case was nothing but respectable. He never threatened anyone. He didn't become violent. In fact, he didn't behave in any fashion unbecoming any individual in a courthouse outside of the fact that he was wearing a jacket um, that said, fuck the draft. He was arrested for violating state law. That state law prohibited uh, malicious or willfully distrib disturbing the peace or quiet of any neighborhood or person by offensive conduct. Um, he was ultimately convicted for violating that statute um, because the trial court uh, interpreted that his behavior had a tendency to provoke others to violence or disturb the peace. Um, but it didn't. And I suppose that's kind of the linchpin of this case is there was no one who was actually driven to violence because of this, um, nor would any rational person most likely. So the Supreme Court hears the case, uh, and, and in a 7-2 decision written by Justice Harlan, um, overturns the conviction. Um, they held that th there's an important distinction that the court has to make here, um, and has to make many times that we'll revisit, uh, in fact, in, today in this class, is the difference between speech and conduct. Um, Conduct is not protected by the First Amendment, or should I say pure conduct, but speech is protected. So the court rules that this is clearly speech. And the reason for that is it's very obvious that the defendant in this case was trying to articulate a political stance. Whatever fashion he chose to do that in, um, in terms of writing and in terms of the language he used, is 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 unimportant. The fact that he was clearly engaging in a speechful act means that his action, what he was convicted of, deserves higher protection um, than if he was merely engaging in conduct. And the court also distinguishes, in large part, this case from an earlier case, um, which was uh, United States v. Yates. And the reason for that is. Um, in the United States v. Yates, the defendant attempted to uh, disrupt and cite disobedience in the draft, and he did that by tearing up his draft card. In this case, this individual was just was just in saying he disagreed with the draft, um, and therefore the court says, "Well, since the the conviction rests solely upon this idea of free speech, it can only be justified as a valid restriction um, on the." on the exercise of that freedom. And the state cannot prohibit any substantive messaging because if it's pro it's prohibiting a substantive message, it's doing so in a content-based restriction. And this was clearly a content-based restriction. Um, and the easiest way to demonstrate that is an individual walking into the courtroom in 1968 who was wearing a jacket that said, I love the draft, would not be under a similar situation as Cohen in this case, stating his opposition against the draft. Um, the court also rules in that the statute is vague because it at no point um, discusses what offensive speech is or offensive behavior is. Um, and they also say, and I, I think this is perhaps what Harlan uh, gets most correct, is that the this doesn't have, in actuality, anything to do with obscenity. Um, that the reason why the court prohibited this message is because, foremost, it was effective. Everyone who read the jacket understood what Cohen was saying. That is an effective means of communicating a message. And so it's not 
because of the offensiveness. It's because of the effectiveness. And anyone who, it didn't arouse anyone to violence, and anyone who was, who didn't want to view it could do a very simple action, Harlan says. They could have turned away. Um, he goes on to write that free expression is a powerful medicine in our diverse society. And the First Amendment should not be compromised because of the concern of the community's reaction. Um, so ample, a more compelling reason, uh, the states cannot make the simple display of fuck a criminal offense. There are two dissents in this case, Justice Blackman and Justice Berger. Um, and, and they argued that the defendant's uh, absurd and immature antics were purely conduct in nature and very little speech. Um, and therefore, it should be judged as conduct and not speech. Um, but that, that dissent doesn't really carry the day. And so we're left with a very decisive majority, a 7-2 majority, um, which says that even if your speech is offensive, if it is political and aimed at political communication, political speech, um, it is protected even if some may object to the offensive nature in which it's communicated. 